Stu, you mentioned that you had a lot on your mind about your last fight and your career. So what's been on your mind? Is there something that you think you should have done differently? Well, um, the thing is that, you know, I actually don't know where my career is going or if I'm even going to continue fighting. So, you know, you know, there's just a lot of decisions I have to make. And, uh, but right now, I'm contemplating is uh, I'm trying to get my life why, why are you considering not competing anymore? Um, it's too hard. It's like, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not making decent money, and, and the money I'm, I'm kicking out for training is just, it's, it's putting me in a hole. You know, uh, the, the fights that I'm, and I'm fighting really tough guys for a small amount of pay, and, it's just not you know, it Yeah, you know, and you know, I'm different than most fighters. Like I have have I've grown man problems, you know, like I don't like I don't have a, you know, I got a I got a kid, so I got a three kids, I got a mortgage, I, you know, I got car loans, I got you know, I'm not some single guy in my twenties. My early twenties. So what do you think you'll be doing <laughs> instead if you stop fighting? See, that's another thing too, you know, I just, I just graduated with my master's in project management and I'm still in school finishing out, finishing out my MBA. And so come, come uh, late September, I'm going to have two master's degrees. Really? Yeah. I wasn't aware of that. Wow. Yeah, exactly. And you said in MBA and, uh, and what else? Uh, 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 project management and, and my MBA. Yeah, so yeah, it sounds like you'd probably get a quite a bit more money doing that than fighting. <laughs> I can't get the job that's paying me that's actually paying me less than I'm making now, so it's virtually impossible I can work at McDonald's if I make no money. <laughs> so, so what was on your mind about your fight? Was there something that you think you should have done differently there? Well, you know, I mean, there's a lot of things there, you know, uh, you know, you know, with my fight, it was just everything possibly that could go wrong, you know, went wrong, and, and it really showed up in the fight, uh, you know, uh, you know, I don't like to make excuses, you know, I think Brian showed up, and he, he was, he went in for the kill, and, 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 uh, he was definitely a better man than I was, but what I would say is that, you know, you know, uh, there were a lot of things that went wrong in my training camp that if I actually did get another fight, you know, I would, I would hope that the same things did not reoccur and I could, you know, perform me, uh, uh, much better. Um, you know, one, I had a, I had a severe injury, I had a, I had a rib injury, um, you know, that really took me out, um, and actually almost took me out for well, close to a week and, yeah, I got that like four weeks out. You know, from the fight and did you, you know, point on. did you get that during sparring or something? How did how did you get that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I actually did get it during sparring. You know, I was helping out a friend, and you know, you know, you know, stuff happens in sparring. So it was one of those things, like you know, I, 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 I took the kick to the ribs, and and uh, it was it was shocking how it happened because you know those are things that I never really let happen. And it just it, all I felt was something like. And and I tried to play it off like I was okay, so so I rushed him against the cage and I was trying to do some 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 dirty boxing, and then I realized that I can't move, and then I had to stop. Really? And I like I shook it off, and then I was like, you know, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. You know, let me just walk it off. Maybe you know, um, my coach is telling me to do uh, some stretches and something. I was I was going to get against the cage. He told me to stretch. I was like, yeah, stretch, stretch, stretch. And, and so I came back in there and I, and I threw like a one-two uh, punch combo and right there, everything just tightened up and I couldn't move. I was, it was done. Um, Were you a rhythm? You know, huh? Were you a rhythm? No, 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 it wasn't broken. I, I tore a cartilage in my rib. And, you know, I keep seeing pictures to as I went to my physical therapist and he did some dry needling to, to, to get the blood flow there. You know, we, we taped it up 
probably up to like the week before my fight. And were you still just injured during the fight as well? Um, I mean, it hurt, but it was okay. You know, um, I mean, the pain went away. I was just so afraid of it reoccurring. Yeah, if you do it again in that already weak spot. Yeah, yeah, so, so, so I couldn't write. Uh, it was two weeks before the fight. I was born with, who just fought this Saturday, I was born with, uh, I was born with Neil Matney. And, and, um, you know, I mean, Neil Matney is a good guy, you know, he, 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 he's an awesome dude, so, you know, his, his technique is, is, it's really great, so, and I was getting some good sparring with him, and, and I was kind of trying to challenge myself, so they put me in a cage, and when we do cage rounds, that's when we go, you know, the hard, you know, uh, because we also do rounds on the, on the big mat, and then we go in a cage, and that's when we really simulate the fight. So, mm. so, uh, I mean, Neil, you know, with his long ass arms, he was, he was tagging me, and I was like, I was moving, sh shucking and jiving, and then, um, then I shot in, and I got the takedown. I'm in his guard, and all he did was just come around, I mean, from his back, I'm on top of him. All he did was to kind of tap me like a like a body shot, like something like in in a typical training environment or even really a fight. It just would not have done anything. Mm -hmm. But when he did that and he hit me, I I rolled over. I I, I stopped. He got mount. I I couldn't move. I couldn't strip. You know, my coach literally had to call around and told me and and, that, and, and, like, and asked me if I could continue because I was done. I was like I couldn't I couldn't move. My body just spasmed him up. And this was and this was like two weeks before the fight. Wow. So you know, do you think uh, you would have won the fight? It was it was technically three weeks, but but but, but this was the, the the second to last sparring session. I had one more sparring session. Okay. So this was uh, so this was the second to last sparring session. Um, so because we have one big hard sparring session at the end of the week, uh, every week, you know, you know, so we put everything together, and in the, the, the end of the week we get one hardcore, let's go all out start type sparring session. So, so I actually came out the cage. I couldn't move. I got emotional. I started crying. You know, I, I, I was wondering if, if I should fight. You know, like I, I was telling myself, I really want this fight. I really want to fight. You know, fight Brian Foster. You know, I need the payday. There was like so many things going on, so much pressure. You know, I already talked to Joe Silver. Joe Silver was like, you know, uh, Joe, Joe Silver said, let me know the results of your next fight. And hopefully at the finish, so he was giving me like positive vibes that I could possibly get signed. I was in three fight winning streak. One more win of a guy like Brian Foster. Come on, I'll have to be back in the UFC. Mm -hmm. So, so, so there was, in my mind, there was like no way that I could not take the fight, you know what I'm saying? Do you think you, what if he didn't go in with that injury? I mean, I mean, I mean, I, 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 I'm not going to sit here and, 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 and downplay, uh, you know, Brian Foster's skill set, so. Yeah, he's, he's definitely I'm skilled. Be, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I would be kind of disrespectful for me to say, yeah, if I was injured, I would definitely kill him. I will say this much is that if, if if at my training camp, if I didn't have that injury, which kind of hindered almost everything from that point on, because now, because now my training camp, it, it became a it became a situation of not training to get better, but just doing a little bit I can do to make weight. Yeah. So you know, cause I, because I cut a lot, a lot of weight, so so um. So if I didn't have to go through that, you know, I, you know what I would say is that uh, the fight would have been different, and I believe, and I believe that I would have put on a better performance, and and I would like to think that I would have won that fight because I think with everything considering, in the position I was in, I think I still put up a tough fight against somebody with a shitload more experience than what I have. So I believe if I have just a little bit more training underneath me or preparation, I do believe that I could have, uh, uh, you know, win that fight. You know, uh, I mean, I mean, once again, no disrespect to Brian, uh, to Brian, and I'm not trying to make excuses, but, you know, facts are facts, and this is exactly what happened. You know, so, so, you know, uh, so like the, the last 
last week of sparring, I had to wear like a you know, like a belly pad and I tried to get some rounds in. And it was pretty decent. You know, uh, everything went well. You know, um, I felt I felt better. You know, and um, and you know, but it was just you know, it was one of those things that could have been too little, too late. You know, um, and another thing that I think that went wrong with the fight strategy, why? I mean, uh, this is literally my bad. Is that uh, I gained too much weight? Like, you know, my boxing coach, he wasn't there, but he saw the fight. He said I just look really big and bloated, and I look really slow. So that slowed and you I, down in your striking. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I weighed it at one seventy one. By the time I stepped in the cage, I was like one ninety six. Really. Yeah. How did you gain so, so much weight so fast? Uh, you know, I, I had I had IVs and drink water, food, you know, just everything, you know. Uh, but you know, uh, I mean, the first time I did that was when I fought Jason South. You know, it wasn't, you know, I kind of get, I, I I got up to one ninety ish, you know, but uh, I I definitely got way bigger in this fight. Okay. You know. Uh, and, and you know, and at times, you know, I thought to thought those things would work for me, being a really, really big guy. But you know, as you saw, Brian was just a faster, more agile guy, and I was, you know, and I and I really believe my coach. I, I really believe he's correct. I believe I was kind of kind of slow and adopted. I mean, the first round, Brian was just whipping my ass. You know, um, I started to feel myself a little bit in the second round, and in the third round, I, I, I dominated. You know, I, I couldn't do much to get the fight finished because, you know, Brian is pretty savvy, but, you know, I was the one that was pushing the pace and, 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 and I was on top and I, and I was able to, to secure that round. So basically, at the end of the day, if I had to start off the first round the way I, it would, the way I went into the third round, I could have won that fight. So would you like to have a rematch then with him, like when you're not injured and you've cut down on weight a little bit more? But, you know, those stuff is kind of idiotic. I mean, he would never give me a rematch. Uh, no promoter would probably never pay for it. I don't think that fight was, uh, you know, I mean, because I could get a rematch and get injured in that training camp. Like, who knows? You know what I'm saying? Like, if I pass cross, would I fight him again? Yes. Am I going to sit there and like, dwell on it? Like, oh, I'm, I, need, I need Brian. I need to fight Brian. No. You know, um, you know I, I mean, in the regional scene, to get a rematch, it's, it's virtually impossible. Don't ever see it. Yeah. Don't ever see it. I mean, if it was maybe, Two local guys, and it was, the, and, it, and uh, the decision was so controversial that it was like, you know, it was a huge outcry, maybe something like that. But our fight is nowhere close to that. We, we, we'll never get a rematch. Plus, he was talking about going on a one fifty five. Is 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 yeah? Is 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 not something I think about. Okay. So, so you coach as well as fight, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, and for a while, you were even your own coach. Yeah. So, do you think, um, what was that? Was that difficult coaching yourself, like being your own coach? I, I haven't heard of that. Before. No, no. I mean, I, I, you know, initially, uh, no, it wasn't. And initially, uh, I really enjoyed it. We had great success. You know, you know, that's how I made it to the Ultimate Fighter. Mm-hmm. I made it to the Ultimate Fighter on my own diet. You know, and 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 the truth is, uh, you know, um, and that's why I, you know, that's. You know, um, the only reason why I, I, I uh, decided to actually get a coach, it was coming off the, uh, the ultimate fighter finale, and I lost that fight, and, and I feel like I needed a change, and I feel like I needed, you know, I mean, you know, when I fought Bobby McDaniels, who have 30 pro fights, come from a Greg Jackson camp, you know, already kind of knew me. You know, like we we, we trained together on the show. The coaches that we the coaches that we was uh, the coaches that was on the show was training with him. You know, we had John Jones, Frank Mayer, Ricky Lundell. You know, all those guys was was training with them. So all those guys that coached me on the show, they saw exactly what I did do. You know, and 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 like I'm not saying that made a big difference because. I think the fellow has so much experience that, you know, you know, you know, what I bring to the table, I don't think it's something he 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 hasn't seen before. But it does it does give him a little bit of advantage, right? So so, you know, so having such a strong camp, 
and such strong coaches and strong training partners, you know, you know, it put me at a huge disadvantage. And here it is. I'm in Colorado Springs training with almost amateurs. So do you think that slowed down your progress at all? Having to take the time to train other people when you could just be spending all of your time training yourself? Well, it wasn't like that. It, it, it wasn't like I would train people and didn't train myself. Like we were all trained together. Okay. You know, I would teach a class, and we would all go through the drills. We were all spar. We were all grapple. We were all wrestle. You know, I'd come up with drills, techniques, ideas, you know, uh, workouts for us to do. We all do it together. So you would both get better together? Yes. Okay. And you were also in the military, right? And do you think that military experience helps you at all when you're fighting and coaching? No, not at all. Uh, coaching, maybe. Maybe. Uh, uh, fighting, no. Um, I mean, coaching, coaching, I can see how the military can help me with the with sense of leadership and the sense of dealing with different types of uh, cultures because in the Army, you know, we like, you know, uh, I'm from New York, so, um, you know, I ain't never really been around people from the South, you know, I, I never really been around to me people from California, you know, like I'm mostly been around people from the East Coast, I'm yeah. so, so when you like, you know, you around like this whole bunch of different, you know, people and like, and, and it kind of helps you become more adaptable to your environment because you get put in such different strange environments, so, and then, and then, and then only being around different people and cultures. You are a lot of times put into leadership roles where you have to teach people, mentor people, manage people, supervise people, and evaluate people. So, uh, so, so I can see how military will help me out as far as coaching and leadership, but as far as training, if, I mean, as far as training and fighting, I mean, fighting, uh, no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't really take anything away from my military training. Uh, I think, uh, I think. You know, I mean, I was a computer nerd. I wasn't no high speed special force army ranger infantry dude. And I was I was a computer nerd. You know, I sat I sat behind a computer with some people need communication, they need a radio fix, they switchboard, the telephone, the computer. He called me, so <laughs> I was nothing high speed. So yeah. So how did you go from the military to competing in MMA? Um. You know, you know, I always wrestled and I always boxed and I was always competitive. And I just one of the things I've always been a physical person. I spent a significant amount of time in the gym, and you know, I got into um, I got into capoeira, and um, and then I got into uh, jujitsu, and you know, and and that was a part of around the time frame that the Ultimate Fighter came on, and watched the Ultimate Fighter doing jujitsu. It just clicks, you know. So I mean, it's like if there's something that's around the corner. Um, plus I was stationed in, in Iraq and we built like a little fight team and it was like so many people from different cultures that like, we had a lot of European or Eastern European guys uh, that, that that was also in Iraq with us kind of a, a, a support and a lot of those guys had kickboxing experience and just grappling and you know survived and with Sambo and stuff like that so trained with them and you know, and everything just kind of came together. So you were always just kind of naturally interested in it. Yeah, I, I, I think I always been. You know, uh, you know, you know. Even growing up, I was I was always into being into karate and kung fu and stuff. Just that my parents were just too, you know, they was too poor to send me to a school. But you know, I always wanted to do martial arts. You know, and so you know, me and my brother, you used to, used to practice karate. Although we you know shit, we used to throw kicks at each other. We see a kick in a movie, we try to replicate it. Yeah. You know, we used to go out there and do backflips and, and, and flipping off the wall and come up with different kicks and stuff. We just had a huge amount of talent, but just no, nobody to guide us. So did you ever imagine that you could, that you would be in the UFC one day? Like, is that you know, when I first started, no, no, I didn't. I, 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 I didn't know, I didn't know where, you know, what it would take, how long it would take, you know, I just knew I wanted to fight and keep fighting and, so how did it feel when you did? What? So how did it feel when you did? Was that a goal that you had been shooting for for a while? Yeah, you know, it was it was huge. It was, you know, I still think about it. I, I still, you know, it, it's one of those things like, uh, I really believe that, 
you know, some people mature at a different pace, but I really believe that I wasn't mentally ready for it. I think it happened too quick for me. And why do you and, say that? And at the end of the day, huh? I said, why do you say that? Uh, because when I was in, you know, and, and, and I fought Bob McDaniels, you know, I mean, I mean, once again, I'm not going to say, you know, I'm not going to be disrespectful and say Bob didn't. He didn't put up a good fight and he didn't deserve the win. But I will say this much, you know, I, I just remember being there and just being in such awe. I remember being in the cage and looking around. I, I looked up at the banners and we saw banners of old fights and stuff. And I remember thinking to myself, wow, this is crazy. I can't believe I'm here. Not thinking about my strategy, I'm focused, I'm like, I'm in zone now, you know? You're just you know, awestruck that you were there. Out, yeah, I remember walking out to the cage and people were screaming. Like, 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 I, I happened to walk past all of Bubba's family, which was very funny. And people was like screaming at me, you're going to get knocked out, boy. you about to lose, boy. You're done. But we're going to knock you out, boy. And I'm like, I'm like looking at these people. I'm like, I turned around and said to myself, like, I looked at them. I was like, I said, that was mean. <laughs> like, I like, 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 I've never been in that situation. And, you know, you were understand that I went from fighting locally in Colorado Springs, literally. Mm-hmm. Like, small venue, 2,000 people. Those guys you would, you you wouldn't even know nowhere close to their name, you know. I mean, th- I mean, this wasn't even like a regional fight scene. This is a local, like like I said, two thousand people to fighting in the UFC. Hmm. Uh, so, so you know, I'm you know I'm walking out, people screaming at me. I'm going to the cage and like cameras and like everything was just such a huge deal that that I couldn't soak it up and perform. Like, a lot of things that we trained on, we worked on, I didn't do. You know, I, I believe I put up considering the situation, considering everything that transpired. And, and uh, you know, I believe I put up a decent fight. But, um... But you were basically just too shocked to give it your all? Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I gave it my all, but it was just so much, I, so much more I could have done if I was just more mentally mature. But I physically, you know, that type of situation. Like, like if you watch somebody like Kelvin Costello... You know, uh, you know, or Gaslam. I, I keep calling this stuff Gaslam. Uh, um, he goes in there and just fights. He just zones out. He just fights. Like you know, you look at him. Like I always felt with Kelvin. You know, you know that he's not great at anything. With Kelvin's biggest strength is, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying he's not a good fighter. Yeah. But he, like, like, like he's but he, like he doesn't come in like. He, he doesn't come in with like a, a, a skill set that you'd be like, you better watch out for that. But he comes in with the mentality that, that he's going to find a way. And like, and he always seems to elevate himself during the fight. Which, at my end, and this is something that I needed to address, I don't do that. Sometimes I kind of feel like I, I, I train better and then when I actually get in the cage, it doesn't come out the way that it needs to come out. Mm-hmm. So, so you know, those things obviously really hinders my performance because I believe, you know, many people haven't even seen, uh, you know, 10% of my, my real talent. So then and how do you mentally prepare? Bef- so then how do you mentally prepare before you get into the cage? I, or, or I usually, don't. like, you, d- you don't? No, I really, I really, I really don't. You know, I, I have, I was, you know, this is, you know, I mean, this is like all issues. I mean, I think it comes from me training myself for so long that it, that even when I do have a coach, you know, and the problem is, the, I mean, the problem is with my coach that I do have is that it's so part time. It's not his fault. It's my fault because I live an hour and twenty minutes away. So the amount of money I spent to go up there and see him, I only could go train up there, you know, train with my, my team in Denver because I live in Colorado Springs three times a week. So, and even, and, you know, like as most people that train in that camp, like Chris Camozzi, Nate Marquez, who did phenomenal this, this weekend, uh, Brian Camozzi, Marcus Edwards, who's on a killing streak, uh, Adam Soup, a whole bunch of other guys, the guys up there training up there every day. They get to work with Mark uh, Montoya, who's the coach, uh, every day. You know, with Joe 
Joe Warren, Ryan Rogers, Cortez Coleman. You know, those guys get to train every day with each other to get one on ones, you know, they get the private training sessions, they get everything packaged. So when they go fight, they can really be the best that they can be. But with me, it's like I go up there, I take the class, I jump in, Mark works for me a little bit, and then I come back home and then I do my own thing. And 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 and, and it's just a matter of like logistics. Yeah. So, so speaking of, you know, the way the way I kind of feel at this point, you know, especially with the last fight, because I almost didn't work on my coach at all because of my ribs and, you know, and, and the other factors, I, I kind of feel like I still am coaching myself. So that, you know, so that kind of leaves you as, at a disadvantage because they have the ability to train 24-7? Yeah, well, yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, I also don't want to shortchange the guys that I have down here, you know, because I have my boxing coach, I got my jiu-jitsu coach, I got my assistant coach, Dave, and some of my guys here, but as far as the level, the level of caliber of MMA, toward MMA, it's in Denver, and I just can't get up there today as, as much as I need to, mm-hmm. so, so I try to make do with what I have, you know, and, 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 and that's why I kind of felt like that, you know, it's, you know, it, it's a matter of um, staying working out. Like I mean, you know, you know, you know, with my fight career, like, like, you know, I made. Don't get me wrong, because I, cause I, cause I sound like negative Nancy. <laughs> you know, when I left the Ultimate Fighter and I'm, I started training, you know, in Denver with Mark Montoya and Factory X, including my original team. Man, I went on a three fight winning streak. You know, people, I, I don't think people give me enough credit for what I did. Like, yeah, and yeah, you have a good each record. fight, yeah, in each fight, and it was already close, relatively close, in each fight was a tougher guy. I went against the local guy in Denver, who was one of the top guys, you know, Jason Lee, okay? I, I finished him in the third round, okay? He comes from a grudge. He comes from a good camp. And I went against Bernie Lives, who was, who was having a flood of experience. He was like 16 to 5. He, uh, he was in a six, six, six or seven fight, winning streak with all finishes. Mm-hmm. And he was at the time considered the top guy in Colorado. And you fought and, him. Uh, and, huh? and you fought him. Yeah, and I fought and I beat him. Really? Yeah. Then I fought uh, Jason South, who, who who was also another tough alumni from season sixteen. But Jason South, his record was ten and one. He had and all ten of his wins was all finishes. And really? his one loss, yeah, and, and his one loss was to. Uh, the uh, MFC middleweight championship. He, he lost in the fifth round. I mean, he got clipped. I think he really just kind of gasped out and got a little tired, but he got clipped. And and he got finished. But, but he fought five rounds in the middleweight division. Me and him fought at welterweight. And before that, he was in a, he was on a ten fight winning streak with all finishes. And I beat him. Really, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't realize all that. And you had a perfect amateur record as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It was all with finishes. Then, then if you think about Brian Fox, like, even even though even though I lost that fight, if you factor in like this is a guy that got twenty, he had twenty one fights, yeah. all finishes. He never been to a decision until he fought me. I I didn't uh, realize that either, actually. You know, yeah. I know it's funny. I didn't know that too until after the fight. <laughs> Because <laughs> unfortunately, I, I don't do a lot of research on my guy. I watch a video or two and then I move on. <laughs> but, uh, but um, and you know, and, 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 and also he was he was he was in the UFC. He he, he, he submitted Matt Brown. You know, Matt Brown, the the Matt Brown that that everybody is you know is like you know yeah. uh, you know we're kind of all sweating right now. Mm-hmm. You know. And probably will be fighting for the title if he gets past Robbie Lawyer. Like he submitted Matt Brown, and and he he fought he fought Rick Story to a decision. And after that, he was on a two fight winning streak. The only reason why the UFC cut him was because he had something wrong with his CAT scan. He had some blood bleeding, a brain bleeding thing, and then there was like a medical issue. And then then they he just couldn't fight, and the commissions won't. Sanction him or something, so he had to go out and get a fix. So UFC cut him. He, he basically he, he got medically discharged from UFC. See, so 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 it wasn't like he got kicked out of UFC because he was losing. He couldn't hack it. Mm-hmm. So for me to fight that guy, go to a decision, and not even be hundred percent, 
and 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 even dominate the third round. You know, it speaks volumes for the type of fight I am. It just says that I got some room for improvement. But you know, I'm not I'm not that far away. So, and speaking and, and then factor in that that you know I'm semi training myself still. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, if you if you were at a camp instead of just training yourself, just at a camp training twenty four seven, do you think like do you think you would become a champion or like where do you think you would be? Because you are. I don't know. I mean, I mean, I mean, I would like to think that I would be a little better than what I am now. But you know, you know, I, I mean, I, I mean, like I said, I'm being negative, nasty, but I really do feel like I got I get good training in. I mean, I, I mean, here, here, I'm, I'm with my boxing coach and we in boxing because you know, Colorado Springs have have a lot of uh, boxers from the up in the Army W camp and USA boxing. They all come here, so I, uh, you know, I, uh, I box with those guys. Um, uh, you know, my jujitsu uh, guys in Castle Rock. You know, Black Belt, Brown Belt. You know, I roll with those guys. You know, if I need a little extra wrestling, I can go, I can go down to CSU Pueblo. And wrestle with their wrestling team, which is a D two uh, school. Um, you know, and I also have my guys that I train with. You know, and and you know, and I think I'm very educated on the parameters of training. I mean, like I, you know, um, I, did, I, I, I have I have a dietitian that you know that, that was, you know essential protein is really great. He worked with me. Mm-hmm. Um, I had you know my physical therapist from. Uh, I walk him out in rehab. You know, he's always giving me uh, uh, trigger point dry needling to help my muscles recover. I got my chiropractor for, from Cairo there, which is David Lawrence. He's also one of my best friends, also assistant coach. He's, he's in all my fights. He's a corner in all my fights. He's been training with me the longest. So, I mean, I, I, so I don't want to show but I have experience. Huh? So you still do have a lot of support? I do, I do. I do, you know, and then when I go to Denver, I have so many great bodies and great fighters, you know, UFC level, Peloton level, championship level guys that I train with, you know, you know, even three times a week, is, it, 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 it's huge. So, you know, I, I, feel like, I feel like I have a world around the program. Now, if you compare that to having a gym, like if I was at Factory X 100%, or, or if I was at some big name camp, like American Top Team or Rick Jackson, you know, sometimes I do feel that some of those big camps, you get lost in the numbers. Mm-hmm. You know, especially you have so many people, you know. That you can't uh, really focus uh, one-on-one. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but you know, in the, in the, another thing, too, you know, you know, one thing I love about Factory X is, you know, uh, and, and Mark Montoya, is how much, how much he charges, you know, he, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't kill his fighters on um, on his gym fees and, and quote and coaching fees. So I, I really appreciate that. But uh, and he, he definitely go, and I think he gives way more than what he receives. But um, but you know some of the other big name gym, the gyms they they will gouge you. You know they're like you got to pay the training fee, you got to pay the coaching fee. If you want any extra training one on one, you got to pay for that. You know and it's like you know, damn. By the time you get your paycheck after a fight, even even in the win. You, you just as broke, you know. Um, but if I could be in Denver trading a hundred percent all the time, yeah, I do think I, I would be a better person, a better, a better fighter. But I, but I do like coaching too. I do like coaching and training with my guys. So you know, I, I think that part of it keep, keeps me motivated, keeps me, keeps me hungry. Because you know, when I go to Denver, it's like I get two worlds. You know, when I go to Denver, I'm not the top guy. I get my ass up. It's great. Okay. But when I come down here, I'm the top guy. But it still motivates me because I got to stay the top guy because these guys that are in my school, they always say, they're always like, man, I can't wait to submit you one time. They <laughs> make me want to keep working harder. Yeah, you know, they make me want to keep working harder because I, I got to be the inspiration and the motivator to them. So, 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 you know how to say, in order to lead, you got to know how to follow. Yeah. So, you know, so, I'm getting both worlds of it. You know, I, I, I could go up there and be a follower, so to speak, and learn from the big guys. Like I could come bring the information back down to the springs and teach. And, and when I teach it, I become more more reinforced to me. So, you know, so I could be a better leader. So, you know, I get both worlds. So you mentioned that you were I, wanting to, you were considering stopping fighting. If you stop fighting, are you going to stop coaching as well? 
No, I know. I, I have to keep coaching. I mean, it's tough fighting just comes down just to the money. Even when I get a fight, I'm getting these low pay days, you know. Um, and I'm fighting really tough guys. You, you know, the money I, the money I got made to fight Brian Foster, it was, I, I mean, I, it was bad. I mean, like, I was really, you know, if I didn't it have that cash, it. Huh? it wasn't worth it. I mean, you know, we took that fight mostly because of the potential of fighting Brian Foster, not because of the payday. Yeah. You know, so, so, so we, you know, so it was like, I mean, the payday really kind of hurt me and my coach Mark, you know, but, but it's like, you know, well, we get to fight Brian Foster, so, you know, we're going to take this, you know, not a very good payday. So, but, but still, how many times you how many times are we gonna do that? And unfortunately, I lost the fight, so that didn't help either. But uh, but but like, but like, how many times am I gonna do that? Like, I'm I'm tired of that. I'm tired of fighting tough guys. Like, like if, if I'm getting paid, you know, low, then give me some low caliber skill fighter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you know, yeah, if, definitely. If, if you, you know, if you if I'm a fight a monster, then I want to get a monster payday. I, I understand this is not the UFC, so I'm not gonna get the UFC money. But you know, let me get me you know a money that that's equivalent to the fighter. Yeah, and yeah, that's the opposite right sense. now. Yeah, and, and and right now it's the opposite right now. Right now is that I'm getting low paydays to fight tough guys, and like and I'm putting my family through a lot of pain and agony as we got to figure out how we're gonna pay bills. Mm-hmm. So, so you know, and then everybody's looking at me like, "You got all this education. What are you doing?" So, so you think it's just necessary to move on and start getting a higher paying job with your master's degrees now? I mean, I don't want to. You know, I'm still holding out. I I, I still have one more semester to finish out my MBA, and I'm, and I'm still holding out. You know, you know, my manager is is, is looking for a fight. Um, you know, we we actually got off in a fight. It was the craziest. It was exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly what I got offered. I got offered a really high caliber guy for Lopez. You could you couldn't get a high caliber guy. You could not, <laughs> the, the guy that wanted me to fight was a freaking ninja. Like, I mean, <laughs> uh, he. I mean, if I told you the situation, you'd be like, "What?" Everybody I talked to. I, I like I I it was just uh, yesterday morning, just yesterday morning when I got offered, I talked to all my friends, all UFC fighters, uh, Chris Camozzi, Big Brunson, Bubba McDaniels, who are all from the really good friend of mine, uh, all the guys uh, for the Ultimate Fighter, Adam Feller, Josh Smith, you know my local guys. I talked to my boxing coach. Everybody told me, no, don't take that fight. And it wasn't, and it wasn't because I didn't, I'm scared to fight the guy. It was like the pay that it was offering was just so ridiculous compared to the guy that I had to fight. And the fact that I'm coming off of a loss. Mm -hmm. You know, why am I going to fight another hugely talented guy with a low payday? You know, like, like, even if I beat this guy, it still won't get me back in the UFC. So that's not a promise that the way Brian Foster is. Because the UFC can be like, well, you, you just lost the fight. So you need to win a, maybe another two more fights. Yeah. yeah so, 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 so there was literally no upside to fighting such a huge, hugely talented guy besides probably taking another loss. If so is a lose situation? Yeah. It's still getting paid horribly. So I, I told my manager, I was like, I, I, I can't do it. I can't. Like, I, I mean, that was that situation was the epitome of the bullshit I was talk, I'm talking about. All right. So this is going to be my last question. So you've done a lot with your life, from making it to the UFC to training others as a head coach to getting two master's degrees and being in the military. Like, what do you think has been the most difficult so far? Is this right here? Because this is the thing I have no control over. Everything else I had control over. You know, my military career, I took control. I did the stuff that I wanted to do. I accomplished what I, you know, you know what I wanted to accomplish, and it worked out for me. Uh, school, you know, you put in the work, you study, you do, you do the homework, you do, you, do, you do the papers, you, li you listen to the professor, you pass. Yeah, I could control that. Um, uh, 
coaching, you know, uh, it's, it's a passion, you know, I love the guys I have, it actually is another source of income, so I kind of need it, but, um, but uh, it's, it's enjoyable, and, and it, it really, it really is my hunger for the sport, but as far as, like, you know, as far as now, I'm just, I have no control. I can't make a promoter to give me a fight. I can't make a promoter to give me a decent payday. You know, um, I'm just sitting here, trading, trying to be positive, uh, try not to get too down and too uh, too depressed and, and just wait. And, and, and that's all I can do. I just, you know, hoping that my manager comes through and I believe in him. And and then and then he believes in me too with the fact that when he does come through, I gotta be, I gotta be physically prepared and mentally prepared. So it's like, it's like all I'm doing is just uh, I'm just in a waiting game and limbo and it's and it's tough because you know life doesn't wait for you the bill doesn't wait for you you know I'm not getting no younger you know I'm 32 so it's not like I'm in my 20s I can just do whatever you know uh, so yeah this is definitely the toughest position I've ever been in and, and it puts me in the crossroads and make me think like how much more do I have of this? Mm -hmm. And what do you think has been the most rewarding? Um, you know, I mean, definitely, you know, you know, my master's degrees, you know, first of all, when I got my bachelor's, it was like, I can't believe I just did that. And then, and then it jumped right back and then finished out the master's. You know, it's funny, it's actually, I feel more appreciative of the, uh, the bachelor's than I do the master's. You know, I got my bachelor's and it was like a big deal, but it was like, everything it was like, I even went to Amsterdam off of it and everything, like, I gave myself a trip. I gave my master's and I'm like, oh, this is pretty cool, it's good. Like, I don't know why, but I, it, it just, the bachelor's was something I just really never felt like, you know, no one in my family ever had one. And it's why I feel like that's something I, 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 growing up, I would never ever do. So, just across that road, it was just huge, but once you break that barrier, it's like school becomes easier. So, going to, so going to get the master's is like, oh, I got my bachelor's, master's, I can do that, and there's no problem. But, um, but to come, but the biggest thing is to have my kids see me accomplish that. That's huge. Obviously, fighting in the UFC. I mean, no matter what happens in my life, you know, I, I don't like the fact that I fought in the UFC and I lost. I would like to leave here one good win in the UFC. But I can say that I stepped inside that cage. Yeah, you, you and, still and made I, it there. That's that's still a huge accomplishment yeah. that not many can achieve. Yeah. And I did it the best way possible. I was on the main card. You know, I was I was on live TV. I fought a uh, tough, experienced vet. I uh, put up I put up a good fight. Um, and, and 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 I was part of the best Ultimate Fighting season ever. You know, outside of season one, mm -hmm. or maybe the BJ Penn season. That was also a really good season too. Yeah. All right. So, is there anything else that you'd like to talk about? want to give a shout out to my sponsors if that's cool oh uh, yeah go ahead yeah um so i, I guess i start off you know with my fight teams uh you know fight through x in in in, uh, in denver colorado really helped we have my my whole fighting knowledge and i wish i could be able to do more uh cast rock design jiu-jitsu with my coach uh curtis hill and, and, and nicholas brown you know, it really helped me develop my ground game, and he gave me my brown belt. Curtis Hill was a black belt on the megatone. Um, my boxing coach uh, at a uh, at, uh, House of Hard Boxing at, at Fit Quest, uh, you know, Carlos Ibera, you know, he's one of the best in, in the state, if it's not the best, and he's definitely helped me refine my hands. Um, my my school, you know, with my guys, uh, I think we have MMA and, and David Lawrence, who's my best friend, has always been in my corner. He, uh, I, I can't, I can't tell you how much he's he's been. He, he, honestly, without him, I would never made it to the UFC. That's just that's just straight up and down the rails. Um, you know, and all the guys that I train with there, and uh, we have a bunch of guys that's coming up. Also, my my guy Tishan, who's been working with me at Central Protein. Um, you know, the meals that he gives is it's so easy because I'm a kind of lazy guy. It's really helped me cut weight. I went from 209 to 171 in eight weeks, and I. I mean, I can't believe I did that. And that's mostly because of him helping me out, you know, with, with bill plans and stuff. Um, my, uh, this gym I'm gonna work out at, work out at is, uh, Kenya Fit, uh, Keith Jackson. Awesome workouts every Monday. I'm there in the morning. He put together crazy 
workouts and the way your system is set up based on the heart rate, uh, heart rate zones and stuff like that. I really make sure that I'm, I'm improving, you know, I'm not just working out, but I'm improving my cardiovascular system. So I see so much improvement every time I go and train with them. Um, uh, yeah, I have my own, you know, um, uh, Panino's Restaurant, you know, always hooks me up with, with, with great food. AJ, also another student of mine's, great dude. Um, you know, uh, oh yeah, I just started doing hot yoga. So, you know, which is, hot yoga kind of opened up right next to me. So they sponsor me, which is such great guys uh, and gals. But, uh, 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 you know, hot, it's called hot on yoga. And, and that actually kind of helped me cut weight too. That was, you know, and that's, I didn't need to get back to doing that. And that was a lot of fun. Um, and, you know, everybody else that, uh, that supported me, I'm um, definitely missing some people. And I, and I hate when I do this because I always forget somebody. But, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So thank you very much for your time. That was an excellent interview. I enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate your time. All right. Have a good night.